Last chapter, tangent meant the tangent of an angle is equal to the ratio, the opposite side of a right triangle, over the adjacent side of a right triangle. In this chapter, tangent is going to have a different definition. Tangent is going to mean touches at exactly one point. So we're going to have the same word tangent with two definitions. So how do we tell the difference between the two? Context. If we look at our first problem, we have a triangle, and each side of the triangle is tangent to the circle. It touches the circle at exactly one point. The circle is inside the triangle. So we can say the circle is inscribed the triangle. In example number two, each vertex of the triangle touches the circle exactly once. In example number two, the circle is on the outside of the triangle. If we go all the way around a circle, that's the circumference of the circle. So we can say that the circle is circumscribed the triangle. And the third one, we have two sides of the triangle tangent to the circle, but the third side is not tangent. So the circle is neither inscribed nor circumscribed. It's neither. The second property we're going to look at. The definition of a circle is a collection of points a fixed distance from a center point. That fixed distance is the radius of that circle. And if I start at the center of the circle and I go to any point on the circle, that distance is always going to be the same. It's always going to be the radius. So our second property is that all radii, radii is the plural of radius, all radii are equal. We will use this property later on to solve some tougher problems. The third property involves a line of tangency. A line of tangency will touch the circle exactly once. It touches that circle at the point of tangency. If we draw in the radius from the center of the circle to the point of tangency, that radius and the line of tangency will be perpendicular to each other. They will form a right angle. That is theorem 10.1. Let's use these properties to solve example number one. Instead of a line of tangency, we have a line segment of tangency. And that line segment of tangency will form a right angle with the radius. In order to solve for x in this problem, I have a right triangle. So I'm going to use the Pythagorean theorem to solve for x. My two legs are 11 and x, and my hypotenuse is 61. 11 squared is 121, and 61 squared, I'm going to have to use a calculator. Undo what's happening to x. take the square root of both sides of my equation, and x is going to equal the square root of 3,600, which is exactly 
60. If you notice, 11, 60, and 61 form a Pythagorean triple. Example number two. Again, we have a line segment of tangency. That line segment of tangency is going to form a right angle with the radius. So in order to solve for x, again, I'm going to use the Pythagorean theorem. My two legs are x and 40. The question is, how long is my hypotenuse? Well, if we look, part of my hypotenuse is made up of the radius. In this case, the radius is x big. So my entire hypotenuse is going to be this x portion and 32. x plus 32. So I need to square my hypotenuse. And in order to square my hypotenuse correctly, I need to have x plus 32 in parentheses. Now do the math. 40 squared one thousand six hundred and x plus thirty two squared a lot of you are going to want to distribute and get x squared plus thirty two squared unfortunately that's breaking the order of operations in order to take x plus thirty two squared I actually need to foil x plus thirty two squared I need to distribute x to everything in the parentheses behind it and 32 to everything in the parentheses behind it. x times x is x squared. x times 32 is 32x. 32 times x is 32x. And 32 times 32. one thousand twenty four now I have a couple like terms here so I'm going to simplify those like terms 32 X plus 32 X gives me a grand total of 64 X combine my X squareds I'm gonna subtract X squared from my right side and from the left side if you notice, both x squareds will disappear. And I'm left with 1600 equals 64x plus 1024. So how big is my hypotenuse? Well, it's 9 and 32 big, which gives me a grand total of 41. If you notice, 9, 40, and 41 is also a Pythagorean triple. Example number 3. Again, I have a line segment of tangency. And with my radius, I form a right angle. So the two sides, the two legs of my right triangle are 6 and 10. And my hypotenuse is going to be, well, my radius here is 6. So my entire hypotenuse is going to be x and 
6 big. Six squared is 36, 10 squared is 100, and x plus 6 squared, again, I can't distribute this x or this squared. I have to take x plus 6 times x plus 6. Using the FOIL method, I take x times x and x times 6 and 6 times x, and 6 times 6. Combining my like terms, at this point, many of you are going to want to subtract 36 from both sides. and end up with 100 equals x squared plus 12x. And then many of you are going to want to try to take the square root of both sides. But what ends up happening is you have to take the square root of x squared plus 12x. And unfortunately, just like I can't distribute this squared to both the x and the 6, I cannot distribute this square root to both the x squared and the 12x. So I'm kind of stuck right here. In order to solve for x, I'd have to square both sides. Which brings me right back to where I was. So I have to figure out how to solve this problem using a different method. I'm going to set my equation equal to 0. If you notice, I have a quadratic equation set equal to 0. Identify your a and your b and your c and use the quadratic formula. The quadratic formula is x equals negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. Doing that math, 12 squared is 144. 4 times 1 times 100 is 400, and I have two negatives, which makes this positive 400, all over 2, which gives me x squared equals negative 12 plus or minus the square root of 144 plus 400, 544 over 2. Now I need to simplify the square root of 544. The biggest perfect square that divides 544 is going to be 16. So I'm going to rewrite 544 as 16 times 34. square root of 16 times 34 turns into 4 times the square root of 34 divided by 2. Now this division sign is like a grouping symbol. It's saying take negative 12 divided by 2 and 4 square roots of 34 divided by 2. So x is going to equal negative 6 plus 2 square roots of 34 or x equals negative 6 minus 2 square roots of 34. This answer is going to be negative, so I can throw this answer out. This answer is going to be positive, so there's my answer. 
Before watching this video, make sure that you have watched the original 10.2 Properties of Tangent video. If you remember, we just solve for x using the quadratic formula. If we look back at the original problem, there is a shortcut to get this answer. If we just call that hypotenuse something completely different, like m, we can solve for that entire hypotenuse first. Six squared plus ten squared equals m squared. Thirty-six plus one hundred equals m squared. One hundred thirty-six equals m squared. Take the square root of both sides, and m equals the square root of 136, which we can simplify down. 136 is divisible by the perfect square, 4. So we can rewrite 136 as 4 times 34. So m is 2 square roots of 34. Our hypotenuse is 2 square roots of 34 big. So how do we solve for x this distance right here? Well, whatever our entire hypotenuse is, we can subtract off 6. And after we subtract off 6, we'll be left with our x value. So x is going to equal our entire hypotenuse, 2 square roots of 34, minus that radius, 6. If you look at our answer from using the quadratic formula, they look a little bit different, but they're actually equivalent. If you switch the order and you put 2 square roots of 34 first and negative 6 second, you'll get this exact same answer.